Good evening, Stats fans. It's Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm Robert Adut of yaymath.org. Last night, we unveiled the truth that is plots. Tonight, we'll be interpreting them. Stay tuned. It doesn't get much more exciting than this. In an era of improved training, conditioning, and the occasional steroid scandal, it's no surprise Major League Baseball stats and our fascination with them are on the rise. From hits to stolen bases to runs batted in or ribbies, box scores of modern day baseball games can appear more like stock market analysis than the baseball of years past. But one stat in particular seems to be rising far above all others, one that shows no sign of leveling off. Of course, I'm talking salaries. Joining us to analyze the effect these tremendous paychecks have on data plots is fellow sports analyst, the wise and outspoken Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A., it's an honor to have you on. Well, you know I'm a big fan. When it comes to major league salaries, is it safe to say that we've got some outliers, meaning extreme values? If a cool 30 mil makes you an outlier, then sign me up. Take a look at Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers, highest paid player in the league. Seems like when we plot his salary in relation to others, it does something to our histogram. It creates a right skewed histogram to be exact. Do they ever go left? Let me tell you something. Left skewed plots happen all the time. Data's just stacked to the other side with a few extreme low values creating a tail on the left end. What if there's no tail on either side and both sides look pretty much the same? Oh, well, we'd say the histogram was symmetric with the data having a symmetric distribution. Did they not teach you this stuff at Sportscaster Camp? There's a camp? Note the position of the mean and the median in these different distributions. Extreme high values, like the salary of our boy Kershaw, drags the mean higher, but has less of an effect on the median. So when we're skewed to the right, we generally say the mean is greater than the median. And then by that logic, extreme low values, like say, my salary, would pull the mean down. Compared to some of those salaries, my brother, your salary will pull the mean straight off the graph. <laughs> but again, not the median, which is why a left skewed histogram generally shows the mean to be less than the median. It seems like the amount that the data is skewed lets us know that it's useful to consider both the mean and the median when describing distributions. That's the type of big league sports analysis that'll take you straight to the top. In heavily skewed distributions, like baseball salaries, we might not want to use the mean because extreme values can make it less representative of the center of the data. But we could use the median because it's not as affected by outliers? Oh, well, here you go. Here's a small data set representing the number of stolen bases certain players had over a season. Note the median is seven and the mean is 7.2. So we could describe the data as being centered around seven without needing to state the specific measure of center. But what if we added some stellar base runners, say with 13, 15, 90, and even 100 stolen bases to this sample? Oh, you're really making me work for my paycheck today. In that case, median would remain seven, but the mean shoots up to 21.8, skewing the data to the right. An indication that the mean might not be useful in describing the center of this data. He shoots, he scores, he steals the words right out of my mouth. Yes, median is much more representative of these players' skills because it's closer to the majority of the numbers in the data set. If we use the median, we're likely going to use the interquartile range, or IQR, as our measure of spread. But if we use the mean, we're going with standard deviation, the standard deev. And the logic behind that choice? Simple because the quartiles are calculated using the median and the standard deve is calculated with the mean. Like the median, IQRs are resistant to extremes in the data. On the other hand, like a weak immune system, standard deve is not resistant to extremes because it uses the mean in its calculation. 
Looks like someone is going to need some emergency. Let's talk more about that idea of resistance to extremes or outliers in the data. The IQR of the data in the original set is 1.5, while the standard deviation is about 2.5. But for the expanded sample, the IQR increases to 7, while the standard deviation jumps to 32.7. That change is massive, Robert. Notice, however, that while the values of 90 and 100 are much larger than the other numbers in the set, the standard deviation does not reveal how close together the rest of the numbers are. In other words, those few extreme values are skewing the standard dev high. And it's misleading because that high number implies that all the data are very spread out, which they aren't. We're looking for the right number to represent the spread of all the data. My friend, maybe you do have what it takes to play in the big leagues. Remember, the overriding goal is to take all spread measurements into account, then make conclusions about the data based on them. Since our IQR is somewhat low and standard deev is off the charts, we know there were some extremely high values, meaning a few players were stealing a whole lot of bases and to take it full circle are getting paid a hell of a lot more money compared to the rest. Always tying it back together, Stephen A. You're a scholar, a gentleman, and my biggest fan. Oh, I am, huh? I mean, you're my biggest fan. I mean, I am yours. Now there is a fine line between weirdness and not weirdness. And you just stepped into the zone of bona fide weirdness. We're talking weird cakes, weird pies, and weird potatoes. You feel me? This is Stephen A. Smith. I'm out. Thank you for watching. I'm Robert Adut. For the record, I meant to say that he's my biggest fan. He hates me. It's done.